talk about this Candy Neville, thank you for joining us and running uh, against the incredible Kate Brown. Why did you choose to do that? I chose to do it actually because I waited and waited for certain things to happen. And I see so much, um, I, I actually see Oregon being primed for great things or primed for being used by outside interest and outside money for their own perfect purpose and their own profit, not ours. So one of the biggest things that catapulted me into the race is the thought of an LNG pipeline going 230 miles across the state of Oregon, cutting through uh, tribal lands, cutting through private property, uh, leading to Coos Bay, um, promising, uh, you know, factory jobs and things like that. But it's one of the most dangerous jobs you can have, actually, those sort of plants. So I waited for us to take a stand in Oregon, and I haven't heard it. So I'm taking it. And the thing that really strikes me there is that a lot of times um, Republicans act like they're the only people who could have anything to do with, with economy. And I think we're primed for being a really strong economy our way and bringing in uh, clean energy jobs, using our own name brand. Oregon's beautiful. Oregon has a thriving tourist, tourism industry. Oregon has an amazing agriculture industry. There's just all these things already set in place that are already here. And one of the fine things about us is that we've been kind of ignored for a while. And right now we're not being ignored. So I want us to build our own economy, our own way by, in, in, by marrying economy with environment. Uh, in this day and age, there's a lot of high tech things that people want. It's not like years ago where jobs and energy really did come from just you know dirty sources or harder to do sources. Right now, there's just a million things wide open, and I want them to be wide open in Oregon. So a lot of it has to do with the economy, and a lot of it has to do with the environment. And some of that goes full circle. It leads into health care, which I care tremendously about. I would like to see single payer. But on one hand, we, we make progress in Oregon, not as much as I'd like to see, but pretty good compared to some places. On, the, on one hand, we're making progress in health care, and on the other hand, we're thinking of bringing in something that's really unhealthy that pipeline, or maybe even in the future, <clears throat> oil wells in the ocean. So we're in, in the position of being corporate piggy banks for, for others, where I want us to be uh, a solid, growing economy our way here at Oregon, you know, and all the things that introduces the health care, the unions. Um, I don't want to talk nonstop because you probably have something you want to say, but now you're doing one, great. Keep going. Okay. One of the things that I've noticed as I, as I look into things it, is that I don't like the idea of winners and losers. I don't even like the idea of deal makers because I see us as a group of people that should be making agreements and the best agreements that we can make. So I know that I talked to some, uh, some pipe fitter union people who were going to endorse Kate Brown. She hasn't taken a stand on this, so I'm not quite sure why they're going to endorse her since that's a very important issue to them. And I let them know that I'm actually against it. But talking to them, it made me really aware of how important it is for pipe fitters to have jobs. And it made me realize how many jobs about every, every new enterprise actually needs plumbing and piping and all kinds of stuff. So to me, it's not like, no, you don't get to do the 230 miles of pipes. It's that there's going to be pipes another way. And it's going to be a way that suits us. Sure. And that, that makes sense. But I mean, also, we're, you know, I hate to say this, uh, there are, I like to see losers in the fossil fuel industry. I'd like to see Exxon lose its right to have, be a business because they basically raped the planet for a, a decade or a hundred years and done it with uh, knowingly and willingly. Right. So I don't have a problem with that. Would you take some of these folks and, and you know, you said it, Oregon's poised. We've got, we got the technology, we've got the beauty, we got the, it yeah. seems like we could take a lot of these people and fix our jobs issue by just retraining them into green jobs, right? Absolutely. Exactly. In fact, I was buying gas one day and the man was telling me that pretty soon he wouldn't be pumping gas. It looked like that would be changing. And I said, you know, we really need to have transitional programs for every job right. because it shouldn't just end and then somebody's, you know, left hanging. A, a lot of things do, well, even in healthcare, you know, when you think that we have all these things in place and we and and uh, too much it's too much about profit and too little about actual health. But there are certain things in place that can transfer and become a system for single payer. You know, there's a lot of information already established and a lot of systems already established 
that, as you said, can be transferred over and retrained and 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 used for, you know, for the better good. Absolutely. And, and quite frankly, if, we, if, we're, if there's anybody who's had any doubt that where do we get the money to pay for any of this stuff? Um, we sell a lot of weed here. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> it, we can use that industry to fund just about anything we want. OK, would you I mean, and, and it also has created a bit of a housing issue, though, because it's been raising the prices on that stuff. Do you agree? Where, where, I, I, Kate Brown, though, she in the newspaper, she comes across as great governor, Oregon, progressive Democrat. But where does she stand on the things you just talked about? Right. Like taking a direct stand on fracking or against these pipelines or uh, uh, making bold moves. Why are you challenging her? Why isn't she good enough? Well, I don't know why she's not taking a stand. It seems overly cautious to me. Yeah. And it, and it, it seems like, uh, I mean, it's important, especially in primary time. It, it, what concerns me is if somebody isn't taking a stand, they're kind of, whole, you know, biding their time. During the primaries, the voters need to take a look at who is taking a stand or what their stand is. Maybe they don't agree with the stand I'm right. taking. But right. they need to know what it is so that they can make a, you know, a solid choice and they can be sending a message. Yes, we want this or no, we don't want this um, for taking a stand. I just do. That's just kind of how I live my life. Anyway, I'm kind of an outspoken person. And and I don't think it is uh, I don't even think it's fair to the pipe fitters to not take a stand one way or the other. I don't think it's fair to, um you know, people on either side of that issue need to know what the stand is for her. But she hasn't taken one, and, and that's how it is. And and I it's I picked the LNG. Well, LNG picked me because I think it totally defines Oregon in, in almost an entirety. Like, who are we? Are we people who who have have uh, let our land be dug into and and treat our uh, Native American neighbors poorly? Um, do we just, do we become, do we become, to, <laughs> the phrase this is kind of awful, but like, are, are we the low paying people or, or are we capable of creating jobs ourselves? Are we cre capable of creating companies or inviting in other companies and expecting them to pay their corporate taxes, which I think solves more problem than more problems than we, to be honest with you. I think there's a lot of money in corporate taxes and I think that they should be paying their fair share. Absolutely. So, it's, it's, yeah. And it seems like that's another battle we always hear with middle of the road. And what you're really describing to me with Kate Brown and the reason why you're, you're, you're running here is she's she's a middle of the road Democrat. I'm not I'm not going to go anywhere. We're not going to move forward. We're just going to kind of sit here, even keel. I'll make the decisions that I know I need to make. But on the on the big things that are, I, I'm worried about displeasing potential donor pools, I'm not going to make any bold stands. Right. And, and that's possible. And that isn't even what what pulled me into it. What pulled me into it is I actually have this this little I say it in my head, this like little joke instead of I have a dream, I have a scheme. Nice. And I just I just really believe that Oregon can be very, very profitable, very desirable, that we can set set our living experience our way right now. And and we did for years and years and years, and and now we're we're in such uh, we're so beautiful actually, yeah. and we when we have so many things going for us that they'd like to use us, and uh, those of us who came here because we love it and because it's beautiful. I mean, my husband is a journalist, not anymore. He retired three years ago, but we could have made a lot of money, you know, promoting across the nation. We want to live in Oregon specifically. We wanted to live in Eugene. And that's true for many, many Oregonians. We love it here. Yeah, so I want us to be in charge of it. I don't want us to have a mentality that is uh, overly, um, overly frantic, overly needy. I, I don't think we need to be needy. We've done, you know, we've done fine. We have our problems. But now I, I think we can do more than fine. I think we can do fabulous. I love and, that. I love that yeah. because you're basically saying Democrats, OK, it's better than Republican. And, and but we need progress. We need a progressive Democrat in office because you see the potential of Oregon to do a hell of a lot more in a lot of things than we're doing right now. Right? Yeah, I think we can do a lot more. And I think I think there are a lot of progressives in Oregon. And I think there is a lot of work that's being done. Um, and and I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm grateful for that. But. I think that during primaries, especially, you've got to look at what, you know, the sky's the limit. What would you like? What do you want to promote? What, what I heard a saying about choose your tomorrow today, you know, 
and so I'm, I'm hoping that we take, it's, it might be a bold vision, but I think it's an accurate one. I think it's very doable. It's just business. I've, I put in development before. I developed a whole subdivision by myself as a whole company. And, and you find out that you, with a good idea and some work, you can make all kinds of things happen. You know, I didn't invent the subdivision and I didn't invent the wheel, but I learned how to make things happen. And, nice. you know, so that's what I want to bring to the office. That's awesome. And, and, and I appreciate that fresh take on it. This is what you want to bring to the office of governor progress yes. and a different outlook on it. And, uh, and that's important. Where can people go to donate, help you? Uh, and where are you going to be? Where are you? Are you campaigning well, or canvassing? I am. I am going to be at um, I'm going to be next Saturday at 130 at the Oregon Black Political Convention at 1441 Northeast 2nd avenue in portland wonderful you can you can go to candaceforgovernor.com and there's a link to donate and you can go to you can send money to candace for governor and when you do it it's not candy for governor it's candace for governor although everybody calls me candy <laughs> at yeah. box 11715 and one of the ways people can help me besides uh donating one of the biggest ways is um you know Journalism is understaffed these days. And so I'll see an, uh, an article that it'll be about uh, LNG or Kate Brown says this or Bueller says that. And I'm thinking, this is a primary. I'm running on this issue. I mean, I care about all the other issues, but this is a big one. Right. But I'm not getting the phone call. What do I think about it? And I, th I think it's the obligation of news agencies to cover the news. So I'm hoping that people will um, start plastering my my thing on websites, on Facebook, on like, um, it, that they will call a newspaper that when there's an article at the bottom or there's a place for a, col a comment, someone will say, you know, Candace Neville's running on, on this issue. She has some things to say about it too. Why don't you give her a call or whatever, however you want to put it. But I think I'm, I'm besides money, I'm asking for people to mega use social media. Yes. And, and and really really get the voice out there it's it's like this podcast it's free and it's it's very potent it, it actually works so that's one of the the big things i'm really hoping for and i want to add one other thing that i didn't say since i talked so much about lng <laughs> i don't want that to mean i i care deeply about housing by the way and one thing i've learned since my husband now works for saint vincent de paul is that people so many people are dying to help and one of the things that gets in the way is some of the um agencies are antiquated and they need to update their procedures right so there's all kinds of people that want to help and then and then there's agencies that you know maybe through no fault of their own but end up blocking and one other thing as as governor i think it's really sadly but very important that right now whoever is governor really needs to deal strongly on our behalf with the federal government in all kinds of ways, in, including the environment, including education. We're 48 at the bottom there. And, uh, you know, who they put in place to handle that is totally unqualified. Um, you have to be aware of privatization, which is just I make money, you don't. And, right. you know, so so there's a lot to be done, actually, with the federal government that I'm kind of chomping at the bit to get involved with. Nice, nice. I mean, it's all sorts of things. I, I realize that LNG is, is the core issue, and I appreciate that a, a lot because I don't want to see the moment these corporations start embedding their pipelines all over, right. they're, they're in, and, and it's they're like in. a virus that we can't get rid of. And it's very irritating. So thank yes. you for running, Candice. We're out of time. Um, I really appreciate you running for a position that most people are like, why, why would you, buy, why, why do that? But what really what you're yeah. doing is, is bringing the issue forward and, and in a progressive way. And that's what we need. We need progressive leadership in all roles of government. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much for running and running. I mean, another woman candidate. Yay. Yes. And all things are possible. All things are possible. Your theme was don't be, you know, April fool's. Don't be fooled. We right. vote. We tell people we can make things happen. We can even make me be governor. That's right. That's right. If we can put one of the most idiotic human beings on earth in the president's <laughs> office, we can certainly put smart Candace in office. I mean, come on. Come on. The whole theme yeah. of this was built on him being the biggest damn fool we've ever seen in anywhere. Okay. Um, that goes back to the education issue. Thank you for running. Candace.